This is the third part of the presentation on muscles. After the myosin binding sites are exposed, the muscle is ready to contract. We must use energy in the form of ATP or adenosine triphosphate to fuel the contraction. The third phosphate is split off of the ATP and transfers its energy to the myosin head. The energy used to attach the third phosphate is going to be the highest and so that's where you're going to get the most energy from ATP is by removing the third phosphate. The myosin head binds to the myosin binding site on the actin forming what we call a cross bridge. The cross bridge is simply this attachment point. When the myosin releases the phosphate it changes shape slightly and swivels to pull on the actin. This is referred to as the power stroke, so the actual pulling is the power stroke. During the power stroke, the myosin pulls the actin towards the center of the sarcomere. Because the actin is anchored to the Z-discs, it shortens the entire sarcomere. The fibers slide past each other but do not shorten as sliding filaments. To release from the actin and relax, a second ATP is split with the energy of the third phosphate again being attached to the myosin. Myosin releases from the actin and then slides back to its original position. This movement occurs because the myosin changes shape when it's bound to the phosphate. At first this can seem like kind of a confusing idea, but it does take energy for both the muscle to contract and for the muscle to relax. So here we've got a little animation. In the absence of calcium ions, tropomyosin blocks the axon to the myosin binding site of actin. When calcium binds to the troponin, the position of the troponin and tropomyosin are altered on the thin filament and the myosin has access to its binding site on actin. Myosin hydrolyzes ATP, which just means splits the ATP, and undergoes a conformational change into a high energy state. The head group of the myosin binds to actin, forming a cross bridge between the thick and thin filaments. The energy stored by myosin is released, and ADP and inorganic phosphate dissociate from the myosin. The resulting relaxation of the myosin molecule entails rotation of the globular head, which induces longitudinal sliding of the filaments. So we've got the acetylcholine released, it depolarizes, the action potential spreads and it's going to trigger the release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So when we add calcium here, it's going to expose the myosin binding sites, allowing the myosin to pull on the actin. When the calcium goes away, it will stop that process from happening and it relaxes. Here we have another animation on muscle cell contraction. Here we have another animation on muscle cell contraction. So we have the neuromuscular junction releasing the acetylcholine into the cleft and spreading the action potential. This is showing it spread through the T tubules. and the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And then we're going to see the conformational change by splitting the ATP. They're a different shape. So this is the cross bridge forming with the power stroke pulling the fibers towards each other.
So where do the muscles get this energy to contract? Muscle contraction is sometimes referred to as a muscle twitch. We know this process uses ATP, so in the next couple slides we're going to look at some ways that the muscle obtains ATP. Creatine phosphate provides an extra supply of phosphate when it becomes depleted from the ATP. The phosphate will be transferred from the creatine to the adenosine diphosphate to make it adenosine triphosphate. This is a short-term supply of phosphate and is not useful for endurance exercises since it is generally depleted within the first minute. Another reason endurance athletes tend not to like to use creatine phosphate is it does hold a lot of water with it, increasing their body weight and inhibiting their performance. Glycolysis will begin to kick in after about 15 seconds of intense exercise as you start to deplete the creatine phosphate. In glycolysis, glucose is broken down to pyruvate and releases ATP in the process. This lasts in an additional 30 to 40 seconds for more short-term energy. The exact time that these will last depends on the intensity of the activity that is done. This is an anaerobic process that does not require oxygen. The exact fuel mix at any given time depends on the intensity of the activity being done and the length of time. Aerobic respiration, or metabolism, only takes place in the presence of oxygen. Here, the pyruvate is further broken down to release more ATP. This process will use a cycle called the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain in the mitochondria. Aerobic metabolism releases a much greater amount of ATP and is able to sustain the muscle much longer and therefore is better for endurance activities. The more mitochondria you have, the more energy you will be able to make for endurance. The ability of the muscle to carry oxygen is important because the oxygen is needed for aerobic metabolism. Myoglobin is the oxygen binding molecule that is used by the muscle. The more myoglobin, the more oxygen you can carry. When there is not enough oxygen to completely metabolize the pyruvate as is, is done in aerobic respiration, the pyruvate will be converted to lactic acid through the Cori cycle or the lactic acid cycle. The cell will only do this when it cannot do aerobic metabolism. Lactic acid is the byproduct that builds up after anaerobic exercise and is associated with the delayed onset muscle soreness. One of the things we are finding out with new research is this is not entirely responsible for the delayed onset muscle soreness. The lactic acid does not stay in the muscle as long as we originally thought it did. Part of the reason for the muscle soreness is also microtrauma or small amounts of damage to the muscle, which are what actually trigger it to build more muscle in response. When a muscle fatigues, it is unable to forcefully contract after prolonged activity. This can be due to several events. One cause is decline in the calcium levels so that myosin binding sites cannot be exposed. It may also be due to a pH change from the accumulation of lactic acid. Another reason is the depletion of creatine phosphate and insufficient oxygen to fuel the aerobic metabolism. Also, the muscle may deplete the sugar stored in the muscle, tissue, and liver called the glycogen. There is also the depletion of acetylcholine in the neuromuscular junction and the accumulation of ADP. There is a link here that is also available on ANGEL to watch some of the muscle fatigue. It's a YouTube video. We used to refer to the added oxygen needed above what is provided as at rest is the oxygen debt. It is not really a debt that is paid back because there is actually an increase in the oxygen needed after exercise. Initially, it takes a period of time for the body to adjust its oxygen intake to meet the oxygen need. After activity, we are not simply replenishing the need from the beginning because there is an increase in body temperature, the heart is working harder, 
there are more tissue repairs and more chemical reactions creating an increased demand for the oxygen after exercise. During recovery, we need to increase the oxygen intake to make these repairs and meet the increased needs of the body. This slide shows a comparison of the oxygen intake and oxygen need during activity with the deficit at the beginning. This is the extra oxygen you are taking in at the end. As a person acquires better fitness, this period in here will become smaller, but it will never entirely go away. This period in here will also become smaller as a person becomes more fit. Once you have this line here where your oxygen intake is meeting the needs, this is where you'll re reach a stable point in your exercise. Initially here, the exercise or activity may be uncomfortable. This is when you start to feel like you can sustain that activity. So here I have a corrected link for the YouTube video on here. You'll want to make sure that you are able to also view this on ANGEL. The reason I'm not including it in this video is it is copyrighted and so you'll need to watch it directly.